Everybody in porn comes from a family. Hey, <laughs> that <was> the <laughs> Welcome to the first And that, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, is what you call timing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome oh, to the board. Yeah, we in here. Gangs of Grass. Live, live and direct. What's up? <laughs> What's happening, y'all? Ask All us from- your questions like what and huh and who. <laughs> live from the, <laughs> from the same... Wood paneled room mm-hmm. with stickers yeah. over our heads that say I, our names. I, I already know what people are going to ask, so I have the answers here. <laughs> First one is uh, you do not actually have to pay attention to which sock you put on the left foot and the right foot. You can just go ahead and put whichever one on which foot. I don't know if that's true. So yeah, I want to say uh, Wrench doesn't speak for all of us when he says that, and uh, we didn't we didn't go over this in advance. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, because usually, like, if you wear a sock, right, when you take it off, it's kind of formed to that foot. That's left foot. That's left foot it, sock. It'll maintain that form. Like, there's a little part where the where the big toe sticks up at. Mm-hmm. So when you fold them again, you got to make sure you have a, a left and a right mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you got on two right foot socks, you're and just, then you put one on, and the, your left foot is all all the skew. Put it on the other foot to even it back out. You know what? I'm just really concerned that it's that it's a, 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 a complete sock. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, right, you, you know right. what I what wardrobe from America's Got Talent I wear most often. The socks. So when when we I, I brought in my own socks because I have socks because I because I roll like that you know, um but but they provided <laughs> in my case we were like in case we were bums off the off the street or something they and provided was, for us the whole wardrobe including socks. So <laughs> these were we, but these were like specialized professional socks. I they were something about them. They were they were fresh. I mean they were literally yeah. the exact same white Hanes socks. Uh, as I wear, except that they were like, I mean, they were new and they were TV and it was California. 
I think they put some sort of a polymer coating on the outside of it. Maybe they sprayed them with Pam. He or must something. have. Because they slid into the shoes and out oh. of the shoes so much easier yeah. than the other socks that I yeah. had. Yeah. Which it happened to also be bombs. brand new Hanes white socks. Yeah, so you notice that, right? They're different. Yeah. And I think they sprayed day, them with something. To this day, I think like uh, they're mixed in with my other so- identical socks. But I'll, uh, sometimes I'll end up with one that's like from AGT and one that's a regular. I'm not joking. This sounds like something I would make up, but I'm not joking. I can tell. You know what I'm talking about, Delio. Well, I can actually tell them apart from the rest of the socks. So I usually just pair them back up. Yeah. yeah. Keep them. Actually, I keep them in my, 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 my road bag now. Yeah. The, I'm behind the scenes info for you, folks. Road gear. Yeah. AGT socks. So what was Yo, it like on though? AGT? Well. Seriously, I think Dan just came up with the name of our new album. In case we were bums. In case we were. I don't know, man. You know, be, being given socks, like, if you do not just have socks, like, socks will be provided for like you. That's just a funny ass phrase. I think it was more so like they were saying, we don't want you bringing your outside socks and put them in, into our shoes. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of yeah. outside shoes and inside shoes. I have not heard of outside and inside socks. No, I mean, like, from outside of the production. Yeah. But I brought my own shoes for the the. Uh, I know they, 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 they I get, damn well they wasn't getting them, them Air Force Ones back. Uh, well, you know it was the, the TV kick game was not was not finding the the shoes. <laughs> they were, and then I, I showed them the ones I brought, and they were like, "Oh, yeah, you wear those." They they must have blown their whole their whole shoe game on uh, our son's shoes, yes, sir. and then renting my sneaker boots. Yeah. <laughs> That was and it was. We went on. Uh, we went on TV this morning on yes, a we did. morning show, network television, and basically said we went on America's Got Talent so that people would carry our stuff. Yes, yep. <laughs> and they did. So that was cool, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we also started a new a new tradition. I think of when we're introducing ourselves. And we're saying, like, what we do in the band to always include that we carry stuff. You tried to start that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. All right. Come on, guys. <laughs> I don't know, man. Either that or we all say, I, I, you know, I play this and I ride in a van. Well, I'm a, I'm a rebel. And uh, I mean, we are I, a band. So I am going to turn off my background for just uno moment because yeah, I just sure. don't think I don't think I'm going to be able to get across to everyone. The, the awesomeness. Hey, ooh. That is sexy. Wow. Ooh. Wouldn't like, that be? Ooh, Lord Jesus. I like that finish. Please tell me the finish is staying. Oh, everything about this, it's almost done. I I do actually need a, a little nickel um, mounting ring for the, sorry, for the neck pickup because uh, it's just loose in there right now. It's not mounted to anything, so it's sort of does this fun effect where it's like really quiet and then really loud and then really buzzy uh as it moves around but uh yeah no this is this is this is based it's done yeah it's basically mm-hmm. done yeah that's what's up yep i am very happy with it i got all the parts on ebay mm-hmm. right Dol- you know you're making a guitar from parts on ebay dolly was making a watch from parts on ebay really yeah mm-hmm. that's fun and Dolio has a plan to actually, like, like I didn't actually make any of these parts, you know, but Dolio has been talking a lot about making uh, electric guitar bodies. Yeah, it took me a good portion of this past, win- well, no, a good, a good third of the year putting together all the equipment that it takes to make this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now we... Um, but we we kind of involved in some other projects right now, but as soon as we can wrap up and get some free time, um, I'll uh, do some test runs on some of those parts. But I think I might actually still get the necks from another place. Yeah, I'm yeah, necks sure. are I'm, I'm not ready to make necks yet. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, yeah, I I got the neck. It had the uh, frets and the nut already installed. I did install the tuners. Um, so that was that was a fun thing to do. Uh, well, there's the also the rod. Yeah, yeah, truss rod is. Uh, yeah, building necks is 
you have to really want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And on the YouTube, we've got uh, Limey Redneck in the house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Limey Redneck. That's uh, somebody in the UK tuning, tuning in. Very excited about the upcoming UK tour. Yup. Very, very excited. I'll scroll our, our list down. There we are. We've got Portsmouth wow. and Guildford and London and Bedford and Liverpool and Leeds and Edinburgh and Manchester and Bristol at the Thecla. You're coming to all those places in June. Speaking of which, uh, if you are a travel agent, get us, get us, get us your contact information. Send us a note from the contact form at gangstagrass.com. It's gangstagrass.com slash help. Uh, you can drop us an email at gangstagrasscrew at gmail.com. Uh, mm-hmm. We want a super awesome travel agent who loves gangstagrass to work with. Um, mm-hmm. That would make our lives easier and awesomer. And if that is you, gangstagrasscrew mm. at gmail.com. You're saying, hmm, like you know somebody there, Rand. I, I swear I knew me a travel agent. I'll do some checking. <laughs> Thank you. We got Rusty in the Twitch coming hey, Rusty. in with the, uh, with the dad joke energy. Uh, yeah, horrible. Uh, Dan's guitar, he wants to know if uh, if you worry about your frets. Hey. Oh. Hey. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sarge gave us ten bucks over there on YouTube, my man. Indeed, we we'll appreciate that, bro. You. See you That's in St. Awesome. Louis, dude. I'm looking forward right. to that UK run. Yeah. Hey, kicking it with some of my peeps. That's right. Yeah, you know. That's right. That's gonna be dope, man. Yeah. Manchester, Manchester's gonna be bouncing. Edinburgh is going to be bouncing. Well, this is all going to be bouncing, but mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to hit up some of our old haunts. Now, Bristol, we're going to have the Bristol, boat bouncing. Oh, oh yeah. Go rock oh, that I boat. I cannot wait to go back on there, man. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. That boat. I want to see if the, see if the boy, the boy that was DJing afterwards is coming back. He right. killed that. That was a yeah. We had a good old time that night, man. That whole that, that whole UK trip was bonkers, <laughs> utterly bonkers. That was that was the thing that actually shocked me the most about the UK tour, especially this last UK tour, where like the thing that happens is you know we go in at you know a perfectly reasonable time of the late evening and play a kick ass show, and you know there's a pretty packed house and you know we're doing the whole thing and it's awesome and then and then they make us leave really 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 quickly right like security is like on us get out get out get out and the reason is that they're about to bring in a dj and everybody in the entire city wearing none of the clothes in the entire city appear and they dance to a dj for the that whole rest of the night fire though man that yeah. shit was bonkers dude yeah, it was a pretty dope fight that was, was such pretty, a wild he was, night he was, yeah the dj was dope that was such a wild night that's that's uk <laughs> and europe like it's a very european thing hmm. the whole, that whole club culture and the whole scene yeah, yeah. i mean it's cool because like one of my favorite producers on earth is from bristol ah on yeah. size yeah yeah bristol's a great town i mean Mm -hmm. a really really great town they have that awesome board game cafe which is always a draw for me i forgot about that yeah yeah, yeah. the one down the christmas steps right that's right that and that's the the christmas steps freaked me out because you know we turned the corner and i saw those steps and i had had a dream about that place and i was just like "Uh -oh, oh this is terrifying and it turns out they used to hang people there The hanging steps. The hanging steps. Mm. That's why they stuck with Christmas yeah. steps. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. If, 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 a, if a place has been around long enough, chances are they used to hang people. <laughs> yeah, Bristol, does, yeah. uh, Bristol has a bunch of layers of history that are, that are cool to see when we're there and acknowledge, um, you know, being a port city 
heavily involved in the triangle trade yeah. of slavery back in the day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of the port cities were involved there. Yeah. Like, but, of uh, course, more recently, uh, you know, being the big city of uh, trip-hop, original trip-hop, with drum, drum uh, and bass. Drum and bass with Ronnie Size, but, uh, you know, massive attack coming up there and Portis Head. So some other great producers as well. Tricky. Right. Ranch, how do you feel about uh, Trip Hop? I love the originals, man. Massive Attack, Portishead, and Tricky. Just can't, uh, you know, and Portishead was one of those things. I was telling you guys before how I love it when something like the first time I hear it, I can't, I can't get it. But after a few times, I love it. And Portishead was one of those things. And okay. 90, yeah, I see 94, that. 94, the first time somebody like gave me a cassette with Portishead on it. And was like, yeah, this is what people are, are listening to here. Because I, I was on a summer abroad in Ireland, and I stopped and saw a friend in the UK. And uh, and he gave me this this cassette with Portishead on, and I, li- I listened through it. And I was like, oh, this is cool. This is really cool. But to listen through the whole album that first time, I just wasn't used to how kind of dark and fuzzy and lo-fi it was. <clears throat> and I was like, well, that's too much, man. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was um, shorty. I was dating, and uh, at the time was was Jamaican, and she was um, she would she would take she would go to, and kick it with her 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 auntie in in London over the summer, and she would come back with records for me, and um, she hooked me up with some pretty dope trip hop and mm-hmm. some stuff. So like, I was like, okay, this is this is what's popping over there. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is that. Some one, a couple of those records were like earlier Spice Girls records, like before they became what people know mm-hmm. them to be now. They were more like a dubstep, like underground type sound. It was pretty dope. Yeah, Nina Cherry is connected to that scene early days too. Mm. Yeah, Jeff Barrow from Portishead and Tricky both producing on some Nina Cherry stuff, which was got to be really good. People just know the Buffalo Stance album, but actually like Yeah, she kept going. Yeah, she had some really amazing stuff after that. Lightning Redneck says they're uh, taking down a statue in Bristol, but we don't I don't think we know about that over here. Wait, they take it down the tricky statue in Bristol? That's terrible. No, wait, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. What statue? I, yeah, I'm me. curious what statue as well. Yeah. I would like to know. Mm. So Is there a statue that they put up the last time we murdered it over there? Is that uh, one? Uh, Edward the, Colston. The wild thing would be if it's like a Confederate hero. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. they, uh, it's, it's Nathan a, Bedford Forrest. Oh man! Daughters of the Confederacy were extremely active. <laughs> yeah, they took him down during the George Floyd protests. Who was it? Edward Colston. I don't know who that is. Now, no one will. <laughs> no, he's a, uh, he was a merchant who was, um, I guess, really slanging slaves. Slanging slaves. <laughs> That's terrible. They dumped it in the canal, he was, according he was a to a human Lime. trafficker. Well, you know what happened, though? So I listened through to Portis at one time and I was like, it's cool, but I can't. That's some, too much. And then on the plane flight back from the UK, I put on the the like air airline radio, the in flight radio thing, mm-hmm. and it was on a loop. It was like a you know like a half hour loop with a handful of songs, and one of them was Portishead, um, I think Sour Times, and every time it came back around, I was liking it better. And then I was just like listening, and I would just like take the headphones off for half an hour and be, just wait for it to come back around in the rotation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I get it now. So it was just so much better than any of the other stuff getting played. Nice. Okay. We listened to, uh, we definitely listened to some more Chiba, too. Yeah, I, uh, I used to get down yeah. with them so Yo, hard. Yeah, they, they had some dope stuff with Pace One. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I used they to get did it. a track with Slick Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they did. They did a lot of hip hop stuff. With uh, it was, yeah, Mochi was hot. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I was there was a time I was really into like them and, and garbage. Mm-hmm. 
I used to run a, I used to run a more Chiba every time I worked at this video. I used to work at this video and CD store up in Penn State. Mm -hmm. And every time me and my man Brett would throw on, because we used to get uh, promo CDs. So we would throw on Ghostface, more Chiba, the soundtrack, the air. Mm -hmm. uh, not, uh, not 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 soundtrack, the soundtrack to the the suicides. Mm -hmm. Air was on that. Mm -hmm. um, what else were we always running? Um, Jamiroquai and the sneaker pimps. Like, it was the wildest thing ever, dude. Mm -hmm. Cats would come in the store, and if they were hanging out for more than 10 minutes, they're like, what? What's happening here? Because they were, they were uh, the five CD changer, and every uh, it would play a track, rotate, play a track, rotate, play a track, rotate. Yo, it was the wildest thing ever. Thank you, Rich Norcal, for subscribing to our Twitch channel. Yo, Thank what's up, Rich. big Rich? Yeah. 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 Big Rich, how you doing, man? Hey, Rich, the hoodie, my hoodies get in here, uh, get here next week. If you need one, make sure you hit the page. Yeah, man. Slanging that merch. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're gonna have some some cool merch on the tours with us. We've got the hats. Uh, we are going to sell out of the hats on this tour. So if you want a hat, get it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, these hats are so dope. I've been to wear them myself. And like, I don't know how I feel about wearing my own band's merchandise, but these hats <laughs> are so dope. I just have to do it. Yeah. Robin R just stumbled onto us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The show. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. It is indeed your lucky night. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Everybody's wearing pants, so it's it's good. It's a good thing for yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Keep that pants. Nobody got time for that. I'm saving up my money for some. That's why you got to join the Barnstormers so I can get pants. That's right. That's right. And that's, uh, that's, we had some great stuff up there right now. And there's about to be a new haul dropped. Uh, we got the Barnstormers, the audio of the LR bag session that we did in Nashville that just came out. And that is great. The audio is fun because you get like a lot of the sort of, you get sort of what leads up to it. Uh, you know, the, the kind of discussion before the song plays and it's great high quality audio of a version of these songs that you're not going to hear anywhere else. And um, if you go to gangstergrass.com slash barnstormers, you can get all of those exclusives and we have a special uh, pass for barnstormers. So if you're a barnstormer and you come to the show, make sure you see us at the merch table because we're going to have a special VIP Barnstormers pass for you. Hard, hard pass, you know, laminate like you would like you would get being a VIP at any show. So um, we have that for you. And if you join the Barnstormers uh, before the tour, you'll get that. If you join the Barnstormers while you're at the show, we will make sure you get that VIP pass right away. So How can somebody join the Barnstormers? Cool. Go to gangstergrass.com slash Barnstormers. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right for now this it's just that simple this exclusive yeah. club and then once you're a member you can go to if you're a nickel member it's only four dollars a month although you can choose to give us more if you want if you if you want to drop 10 a month or five a month that's you can change your amount to do that uh that's gangstergrass.com slash nickel will take you right to all of your goodies you got to sign in and gangstergrass.com slash platinum will take you to all your goodies if you have the higher tier and that has like all the stuff that Nickel has, plus a bunch more really excellent stuff that is just for you guys. Yeah, because we, we've been still working in the studio like crazy. Still still cooking. Oh, so much still, so that we... Stuff and things happen. <laughs> so much so that every now and then, like, we were listening to mix downs of stuff, and I was just like, I don't remember writing that. <laughs> we were just talking about it. I was like, is that quarantine brain? <laughs> We did some things last year that we still got to yeah. uh, bring back to finish. Yeah. I mean, we still, we, we have a lot of videos still that we have not released. Um, yeah, we do got a, a, a bunch of videos. Yeah. As a matter, like, as a matter right. of fact, we haven't, even, up, we haven't released all the videos from time, from No Time for Enemies. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, L just hit me up about the, uh, about the one joint that he shot. 
The Freedom oh. Remix video? No, no, not that one. The, uh, the, uh... Um, what I Am. No, not the no, what not I Am that one. one either. The Your Land one. Oh, oh Your Land. Oh, your yeah, land yeah, 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 yeah. Like, See, that that's how many videos. That's how many videos. <laughs> it's like, no, not that one. No. And the thing is, is that there's there's at least what eight other videos that we could mention that were shot the by by L that there. we haven't <laughs> that we haven't released yet. It's like so, yeah. We we got visuals for so much um, of our of the stuff. Yeah, man. And we have much more stuff <laughs> that we just been cranking out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's a that's cool. But yeah, no, I was know. thinking that 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 LR bag set is actually when I finally got my Chantel. Yeah. She's beautiful. I'm one of the cool kids now. <laughs> she's beautiful. Yes, she yeah, is. man. Yo, shout out to to L by the way, the hardest working dude I know. He's probably out he's gonna be out there tonight. Cause you know, for some reason, cats is wilding out. Yo, it's out here snowing. Does anybody anybody else have the Citizen app on their phone? I don't know. No. Shout I, out to the Citizen I, app. I stopped having. I, I I and I'm and I think I'm gonna unsubscribe from Nextdoor as well. Oh yeah. Oh, Nextdoor oh is God. awful. Why? And it's so depressing because I don't know that there's anything particular about that app that makes it always turn into hot garbage. It it's seems the people. Like it's the people. It's, it's it's the people. people. <laughs> God. Well, come on. Look, communities it's have to be maintained. It's the soil green of apps. And, and it's it, the soil and green of apps. Communities have to be maintained, and that includes online spaces. And you can have, you know, multiple coexisting online, like, overlapping spaces with the same people, same geographic group, same demographic, whatever. But, like, if you're ever in, like... A group say of I don't know new parents or whatever and there's like a Facebook group and there's a reddit group and it's like the same people very different groups Good very point. different groups Good point. Um, because like the platforms have a different vibe whatever mm-hmm. I I personally like reddit I know a lot of whacked out stuff happens there but mm-hmm. uh, I, I, there is potential for great good and uh, I've really enjoyed a lot of the time because Reddit are really more moderated. Yeah, there's well, lives, yeah. There's points and things. Is it? I don't know. I'm I'm being more and more inclined to just abandon all social media. Yes, it's <laughs> just a good point. So that the, the platform really it does make a difference, even if there's nothing explicit about it. It's just front loaded with whatever the vibe is, you know, or what develops there. So yeah. You know. Typically, if randoms can comment on things, you get yo, random. That's you, get what, random. Yo. you get random listen, comments. Listen, listen. <laughs> citizen app. So I got the citizen app specifically uh, when my daughter was just kind of when she was still here and kind of out and about doing her thing. And I was like, you know what? Let me because she was on there too. So if something was going crazy was going on, I would know if she was close to it, and I could reach out to her. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's snowing outside, and I'm sitting just like, man, with crowbar. The shots fired it. Like go in the house. <laughs> right. It's like that's not how you get the snow off your driveway. <laughs> Take your goofy ass in the house, bro. No, shoveling with the crowbars and it's the new thing, man. You out here just shooting out at in the, the snow with yeah, like get out of here, snow. Buck, 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 buck. No, that's not that's how that works. One of those, that's one of those <laughs> things with like the doomsday preppers, you know, and all they do is go out and get guns and ammo, and I'm just like, <laughs> are you gonna shoot the snow? <laughs> are you gonna shoot starvation? Are you? What do you? What do you? Yeah. What do you? What problems? You can really not solve that many problems mm-hmm. with only that tool. Yeah, you might maybe maybe want to get some food. You know what I mean? Maybe some like skills, learn some to stuff, some learn to shovels, shovels some, some, preferably some condoms. Yep. Some, some stuff <laughs> you to don't grow, need to be propagating some your with. seed. Get some uh, and get some seeds so that you. Can <laughs> That is not the segue. (laughs) Speaking of seeds, I made some really good bagels. Oh, yeah. You're saying you you just kind of want to get off apps because they're so often, but like the vibe just turns turns it into, or whatever the platform is, turns it into garbage. And I think my suspicion is your neighborhood or your block probably does a lot of stuff, uh, you know, that you would, that I would want from something like like next door but you just do it in person or through a through a network that exists there yeah we have a very insulated like private group 
<laughs> we have like a, a private social media group that we, we that we maintain and it's moderated and it's invite only. You mm-hmm. have to live on the block to belong to it. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to be Not one me. of the. All you kind of have to be one of the neighbors that people want to talk to. <laughs> to be, in. <laughs> but it stays and, but it's it, it, it's, it's how we know like okay when there's gonna be a trash delay or, mm-hmm. when you know um, the snow emergency is gonna make people move their cars and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or if there's gonna be a block party or. And mine too. I, I we have a we have a Google email list um, that you know you have to be added to by the moderator of people on the block. That is, you know, it's it is kind of like the opposite of next door. Like it's it's all positive stuff. Generally. Yeah, it's, um, it's stuff like all. I made extra muffins. Yeah, you know, actually not <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, or not, something's like oh, I got you know I I I got COVID or something. I'm st- I'm quarantining. People are like I'm gonna bring you some food or. Um, yeah, we had a couple somebody, of those. Yeah, literally, like a couple months ago, somebody was like, "I have all these extra um, bulbs, and we're just going to bring around some soil and bulbs to anybody that wants to dig some holes and put some bulbs in their yard or anything like that." So we got, yeah. we got, uh, my my kid was totally into it when we went out and had a little like hole digging and put the bulbs in session. Oh, that's so sweet! I think it's oh, a really that good. Sounds way point. too normal. That's, it's a really good point about you know what information you can get from an email list and that that kind of gives you the freedom to drop the chains of the social media and not have to worry about it so i suppose it would be apropos at this point to note that gangster s does have an email list so if you are not interested in facebook and don't do instagram and don't care about what people are ranting about on twitter more power to you you can go to gangstergrass.com and you can join our email list there's a little place where you can pop in your email address right up there at the top and uh we would love to have you on our email list we send out about an email a month so you know we don't sell our list obviously we don't share it with nefarious characters or anything it's just us and well, uh i mean well, i mean we are nefarious, but. <laughs> <laughs> depends on how you define nefarious sure and if you live no more in nefarious greater, than us if you live in the greater new york city metro area we also have a network of carrier pigeons <laughs> Yeah, but they're usually to. drunk. <laughs> yes, they are drunk. They sometimes end up at the wrong address. <laughs> Less reliable during big winter storms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one from down here, he didn't want to leave. He was like, nah. I'm <laughs> nah. That, the Philly pigeons don't even fly. They just walk. <laughs> they just, yeah. They walk. <laughs> Yo, speaking they of walking. They take the Uber. I saw, speaking I of walking. pigeon hopping out of Uber. <laughs> Broad Street. Did anybody see Fat Joe's new boots? No. He screen share? Uh, no. uh, neither did he. Burn. Oh! Hey. oh! Wow. Hey, now. Yeah, hold on, hold That's on. That's messed up. Hold on. Yeah, I, gotta, I saw these Jones. It was like... Are they the uh, ones with variable prices, like yesterday's price is not today's price? I, I Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, hmm. Let me, hold on a second. Here. Let me find these Jones. I saw these things. It was like, are you? Are you Okay. Or is it, or, or is the front so, front of the seal, sole of the boot higher than the back of the boot? So you have to lean back. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. let me see, let me see. Like um, all right, like let it. me see. Let me, let me. Uh, see, that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> all right, here we go. Y'all ready for this? But oh, they have extra high platforms, so they take you all the way up. Kind of, kind of. What the oh hell? Oh my gosh. <laughs> They really do. Those but, look you know, like boots I wore when I was three. Those are like snow boot sneaker combo. It's like it's like a split open oven mitt. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's just like Did a cross between an oven mitt, yes. um, a moon boot, <laughs> and a UGG. Uh, all had a baby and a pair of Yeezys at a, the bottom and an Air Max. <laughs> I yeah, can't stop doing boot. this. I can't stop doing this. This is what they make me do. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> well, yeah, a, I, yo, I love, yo, shout out to Fat Joe. Yo, Joey Crack. Yo, uh, like, uh, you got to be rich to wear. You got to yeah. be rich to yeah. wear it to get away with wearing something like that. Yeah, those it's are really rich true. dude. Uh, <laughs> you got to be a rich dude to wear those because yeah, <laughs> if you yeah, ain't, you, you're going to get clowned all the way to your house. Them joints off. Those are, For you got to be real. getting out of a chauffeured vehicle. Yeah, you got to, yeah. 
Yeah, you gotta be. You gotta have <laughs> at least Fat Joe status to pull them things. Off. Right. You can't be walking to the parking lot in them shoes because <laughs> you can clown all the way to your car. <laughs> That's really a whole other level. Like on top of, I feel like though these these are the boots that really permanently move the Overton window all the way <laughs> to the point where Uggs are like comfortably in the middle of what we now accept. Regular Uggs. Yeah. Regular Uggs are just like, well, that would be completely reasonable compared to these oven mitt boots. Is what I'm <laughs> well, the thing is, is that regular Uggs even served a purpose. They were designed that way for a reason. They were intended for walking on hot sand. Oh, word. I mean, Uggs actually, not, yeah, Uggs make a ton of sense if you've ever lived in Australia. It's, you know, not just, right, it's, I mean, anywhere in the outback, it makes sense. There are many, many, many sheep. Like, it just, they, yeah. are, they are very reasonable footwears. I well, just like, I like that the sweatpants and Uggs combo, it just makes you look like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of does. While we're screen sharing, I want to I want to share this TikTok again that that I, that I met that I duetted with somebody because I think I, <laughs> I don't know why it's not getting more traction, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Let me just bring this up here. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, so I just found something out. Yeah. So I never knew. That your hair grows from up here. I never what, knew that. What do you mean? I, I always thought that your hair grows from right here. And it just oh, grows, like the, grows, the right? end of it just keeps getting longer. Yeah, that's not how it Is works. Is there hair in my head? Yes. Like actually like in there? It's all up in there. Where is it coming Filling from? it up. It's like, like in your forehead. forehead. Yeah. I don't know. Just like your fingernails. In my forehead? Like yes, like, yes. Your hair just keeps going down into your head and I filling up. I always No, it's inside I've your forehead. I this hair <laughs> on top. But it's different? Yeah. <laughs> nope. nope. Okay. You can't get over how much she looks like a cartoon. That's the filter. Yeah, that was probably the filter and all that. that. Yeah, the that, 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 there's no way that's real. You, you did a you did a I refuse job. I refuse to believe that that's where we are as a species. No. Also, I don't. I refuse to believe that that person has never dyed her hair, which would immediately have made it obvious where the hair is growing from. Well, if you die often enough, you would never notice. Not Maybe. Real. And again, there, I hope someone points drugs. out the fingernails work the same way. <laughs> there's right. also, there's drugs. also drugs. Yeah, the fingernail. <laughs> uh, now, here's the thing. I've always wanted, I've always been curious about, because I like uh, uh, people who have fingernails that are that long, because most, most of the folks I know that I associate with and also myself and everybody I know, even the women, we all, they all work with their hands. So like they do stuff with their hands so they don't have nails that crazy long. So like to see people who have long have nails that are that long to where it's like longer than two segments of their finger combined. I know where you're going with this. Right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, how do you like let's assume bidets and okay. keep it moving. All right. That's yeah. It's We're not- just gonna assume that. It's not just that, Even that, or they just got streaks in all their draws. Just got crusty butts. It's, I mean, crusty you know. butts. It's it's like <laughs> it's like so much more than that, right? I was just I just started watching, embarrassingly <laughs> so enough, a sh- a show called Snog Mary Avoid, uh, which is which is a I'm I was happy to find it was is a make under show. Now they're not as anti makeup as I would like them to be, but they um. They do, you know, find people who just wear absurdly too much makeup and they show what they would look like if they only wore like a teeny bit of makeup, um, which at least is moving in the right direction. Uh, And they had this they had this woman on who I guess apparently won Celebrity Big Brother by faking being a celebrity. Like she was the she was the not actually a celebrity plant. And her job was to convince all the other celebrities that she was a real celebrity. And then she won and I guess became a celebrity because also that's where our species is right now. I still don't and, understand how Big Brother works. And she talked about, oh, we'll get to that. 
she talked about how like a lot of time with with like these super long nails she like couldn't pull up her pants like so it's not just and yet, was it somebody's uh, job to pull up pants up? Like, what now? But people with long nails, they're like, they, they figure out a way. They type on their phone. They type on their computer. They do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, how do you, um, like, do you, like, kind of, like... I think it's like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't need to understand. I just need to accept <laughs> it to get it out. Truth, man. <laughs> yeah, I would truth. Yeah, I would watch at least one YouTube video about how they operate those fingers. Michelle uh, in the, the Twitch says they use knuckles. Knuckles. Ah. To wipe their butts? Oh. <laughs> that sounds like a <laughs> knuckle butt. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That's I'm, a... <laughs> I'm terrified by that. <laughs> they just wrap the toilet paper around their fist and <laughs> 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 But Wrench, where did you think this was going to go? Yeah, <laughs> really? It's your fault. No, 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 knowing this just, group of people. I thought maybe we could actually go into the theory that your hair actually just grows from the end. That's where my oh, for mind everything. Went. Okay. That's where my so mind Shoshad asked somebody that yeah. had all of that. No, I'm imagining, knowing this group of people, though, you had I'm to be a human head with like, all of the hair in your life. It starts like basically if you imagine like all of your ungrown like, hair is just in your head waiting well to come out. okay right. N not that far off right because right. you imagine a baby's jaw right full of two sets of teeth mm -hmm. right yeah think about that it's teeth under teeth yeah. yeah i mean lots of teeth right but it's not like the adult teeth are already in the head fully formed when well, they're born eventually they are uh, eventually <laughs> they are they're underneath the teeth but not knees. not when they're born. No. You're right. Knees. We should go back to the theory that the hair on top is just sitting there, and it's the tip of the hair that is growing outward. That was a better theory, I think. Uh, that works too. That works too. Airbrained. <laughs> Airbrained indeed, because it's all that hair where your brain obviously isn't. Yeah, we used to. What was it? We back in school, we used to call. There was like we used to call people talking hair. <laughs> Like, wow! It'd, it'd be like, yeah. What are you talking? You, yeah, you're just talking here. <laughs> uh, that is cold. Fucked up. Thank you, Nolly, for the money, money. Shout out, out to D in the house. Nolly, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on record. That was oddly timed. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe at an earlier or later time. Because right now it just feels like you're rewarding this this line of conversation. She's like, and yes, toilet paper fist, twenty dollars. Definitely <laughs> setting up an incentive structure with that. Thank you. Like, like I don't want to reject it. Uh, you know, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> what was that? What was that? That comedy sketch where there's like a political debate and there's a real time ticker that shows the audience approval rating but the issue is that like it starts like behaving arbitrarily and like somebody would do something or say something or even like you know touch their face or something and it would either go like way yeah down, yeah i saw way that I did, yeah, yeah and i, was like, talking about, uh, and, I forget and, what it was but i know what you're and talking somebody about. Mm -hmm. somebody says the phrase post office post box office. that's and real their rating goes up by 20 points and then they notice and it's like well because when the post office <laughs> box and they keep saying it and their rating is just like <laughs> through the roof and then everybody starts trying to fit post office box into everything they say but it doesn't work for everyone because there's the one guy that like everyone just hates him no matter what he does he says it and his rating goes down <laughs> well because it's obvious pandering <laughs> no let's just say you don't have to take your cut i i mean i don't know <laughs> I, not, I don't know i don't know oh my God. Uh, it's it's dirty money but i'll take it no, oh you, no it's me. only dirty because of the fingernail problem See? <gasps> that's bad that's bad very bad. I, I'm starting to have regrets. <laughs> yep, yep. You, you're there now. You're there with me now. That's what Welcome. happens with TikTok, though. Yeah. Fo so follow the Gangster Grass TikTok oh, channel. TikTok. Well, but yeah, we got some stuff going on on TikTok. <laughs> if you're on the talk, follow us. Give us some views. If that's the thing you do with your time, no judgment. It's the thing Wrench does with his time, mm -hmm. and uh, and he just you know he's off giggling in the corner. 
<laughs> Yo, we was like, we 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 were sitting there, and it, it, he'd just be sitting in the corner, just giggling to himself. We're just like, what the hell? Oh, you're TikToking, aren't you? You know, you guys know that every time you rag on social media, you have to then say like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Pretty much every yeah. single time. That's, That's right. why I don't do it, man. Like, I, I mean. Mm-hmm. It's at this point it's a necessary evil. Like I'll be over this all over this stuff all the time. Whatever. And I think I think the issue is I I I don't think enough people have sort of found enough space from it such that their all of their information comes from it. You know what I mean? Like there's still books out there and stuff, like and and you know all sorts of other things. There's there's human people. Like you yeah. can you can talk to human people. Yeah, I'm seriously. Totally I'm totally some people range. don't though. <laughs> like some people that like there's so much that people are just like, I saw this on the internet and now I know it's real. Um, for example, the woman uh, who uh, went to a school board meeting to complain because she had heard that one of the schools in the district has unisex bathrooms with litter boxes for the students that identify as cats. <laughs> and it's not true, because that would be ridiculous. And now the school has to send a letter to all the parents saying, we do not have litter boxes in the bathrooms for students that identify as cats. Problem here. And then they're going to get in trouble no. for not having have litter boxes for students. Yeah, right. who no, the, thing is what they, 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 the thing is that they didn't fully explain what the litter boxes were for. <laughs> Please don't finish that sentence. Or, or the litter talking. boxes are because we have actual cats <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> roaming That's roaming the halls of the school. Not That's what that little door at the bottom is for. Uh, everybody seems to be saying it's furries. Litter boxes for the furries. <laughs> litter boxes for furries. All right, that makes sense. I mean, you know, no, no though. It did like if you know anything, it doesn't actually, but it's just enough. It's got truthiness, right? Yeah. This is what even That's Colbert right. was talking about in the yeah. infamous yeah. Uh, press press. Uh, every that he every gave. great lie has a grain of litter in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the problem with other things. It's like it's it's got enough of a connection that your brain can make to be like, oh, yeah, even though it doesn't actually make sense if you know any more about it. Right. But it just has to have that truthiness enough to make people be like, I'm now I'm going to repeat this. It wasn't like, even litter. Out. It was a box oh. of grape nuts. <laughs> so here's your PSA, folks. Like, <laughs> watch out. There's a bunch of dumb information out there. So try to try to be skeptical out there. And if you hear something funny or outrageous, um, just do, give it a good double check. Wait a minute! Or, didn't we do uh, like a joint pod? Then we did we did like a joint pod podcast that stream about misinformation. I was <laughs> just thinking recently. about that. Yeah, uh, last uh, this past Monday we did a, a gangstergrass.tv TV unbiased science podcast hood medicine initiative joint live stream about misinformation, and one of the things that that you also want to do when you see these kinds of things is not share them. And there's, it's not just because when you share them, you help to spread that, that misinformation or disinformation, which you do, but it's also because it turns out neuroscience is really solid on this, that as soon as you publicly state something, as soon as you share a piece of information, for example, or place a bet on something, as soon as you make a public statement of support or fact or anything like that, you immediately, the the human brain becomes much more vested in the accuracy of that. And that means that you're much less likely later to change your mind, even when faced with the inevitable turn of of circumstances that show you that this is actually not accurate information. So, and, and, and if, and even if you're able to then change your mind and good for you, changing minds is great. Uh, some of the people who may have gotten it initially from you when you shared it and then passed it along themselves, you may have inadvertently actually influenced how likely they are to be willing later to accept that that was not actually true and to help provide real information to people. So it is neuroscientifically proven that it is dangerous to share misinformation because people get more and more and more 
connected to it and they identify with it as like a part of themselves. So careful out there, folks. Yes, that's hard not to do because you want to be like, this thing is not true that they said, but then you just said what they said. You say it's not true. And I've I've seen some great headlines by news outlets that are trying to avoid doing that, right? Like it, you don't repeat the lie. You only give the affirmative of what's true. But the funny thing is, is that like if somebody makes an outrageous claim, you can't be like, somebody said this stupid thing. You just have to report that experts say that that, that the opposite is true, which sounds weird in like headlines out of context where they're like, experts have found that there are no giant lobsters taking over the brains of Detroit citizens, right? Like they can't be like, somebody said there are lobsters taking over the brains of giant citizens. And it's not true because they're still repeating the right. lie. Yeah. So like, for instance, you, you, you can't be going around telling people that uh, Johnson and Johnson's baby powder does not use real babies mm -hmm. <laughs> to make the powder. Right. Because people will be like, why are you saying that? <laughs> Sounds like maybe you're trying to cover something up. Right. Like you're trying to, you know, discredit them. They're using GMO babies or something. <laughs> but no, it's pure organic babies in the baby powder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was this? Um, uh, like I've, I've been I've been posting these to our Slack channel, our random channel every now and then because I get USA Today's fact checks. And there was one about a month ago. Fact check. Bubble tea is made with tapioca pearls, not goat feces. Yeah. Right, but damn it. I think that depends on where you get your bubble tea. Right. Word. You got to get mean, the what the uh, artisanal raw bubble tea. Like that's one of those. It's harder to disprove something like you can't say that all bubble tea is not made with goat feces. You can't actually say that because all it takes is one person. Right. You can't you say it would not be that, real bubble tea. You also can't say that there isn't at least one person out there that read that article and was disappointed. Ew. No, probably not. <laughs> Ew. I yeah, was maybe. just disappointed in society. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we are again. Thanks for <laughs> my screen. Yeah. Talking about the important <laughs> issues of today. The most important issue of today is that Gangster Grass is about to have some live shows. We have yes. a big show coming to the Weinberg Center for the Arts in Frederick, Maryland. That is coming up on Thursday. It's so soon. Yeah. And then we head down uh, down to Richmond, to Chester, Virginia. That's at the Parkinson Center for Arts and Education. And I uh, had, a, had a nice interview with the Richmond NBC affiliate this morning that should be airing in the next couple of days. So that's we're really excited about that Richmond show. And then back up to Dan's home state, New Jersey. We're headed to SOPAC, the South, South Orange, Orange Performing Arts Center. That's right. South Orange, not far from Newark. Uh, very conveniently located. And they've just done a bunch of renovations. They've got great ventilation. All these shows have mask requirements. Check the fit of your mask and, and come on out. We're going to do this as safely as we possibly can. And if you haven't seen a Gangsta Grass show in a while, and that would be fair because there haven't been too many to see because it's been a tough time for live music, you will not believe what this show is like now. It is everything you came to expect from a Gangsta Grass show, and it's just kicked up so many notches because all that energy of being off the road for two years is right there in the live show. It is, we were at a, the, uh, we headlined the Ozark Folk Festival in Eureka Springs. So we're at this like hundred year old theater in this little town in Arkansas. And the people who are there are there for a folk festival. So a lot of people are there because we're the headliners, but they don't necessarily know what they're about to get into. and. That entire auditorium, seated, all seated, was up, standing up, dancing by song two. Like, by the first, inside of the first minute of the second song, the entire theater is on their feet and dancing. That's what we're talking about with a Gangsta Grass show right now. It only took them two songs because the first song we did as, like, a little, like, soft opener, like, to sort of lull them into a false sense of security. Exactly. We wanted them to know that we were we weren't coming in as, as interlopers as some sort of wild right. hip hop act jumping mm -hmm. into their folk festival like what are we, we even we, doing we here? Show them we really about that folk life. Exactly. Exactly. But, but experts have said 
that gangster grass will move your butt. <laughs> this is peer-reviewed research. <laughs> peer-reviewed. That's right. That's true. That's hold, true. Hold on. Hold, hold on. It's true. Now, it was in the journal Nature. I need y'all to see this. I need y'all to understand just how amazing Spice Adams is. Uh oh. Does it involve him doing like this? <laughs> wait, wait, wait for it. Wait. Is that Affion Crockett? Yes, yes, yes. Wait for it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> this is the new this is the new Pat Joe challenge. I, <laughs> hey, there's a face I recognize. That was Falcor. Yes. Yo, <laughs> see, I kind of want that jacket to be longer. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Avion Crockett and Spice Adams. <laughs> uh, love it. Yo, I like how Spice Adams has a, he photoshopped himself into oh. the outfit. <laughs> the outfit, dude. That is impressive. <laughs> no, this, the, the whole thing is photoshopped on it. Yo, everything's for. Where? I mean, like, where did he find those Falcor heads, sneakers? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, where? Where is that in your? Where can I get the files? Falcor head sneakers? I would actually wear them. <laughs> there's, a, there's a rental shop in L.A. <laughs> probably, probably. Thank you, you a buy. curious bird. Once again, yes, with the timing right. on these yeah. folks, please. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like the effect that this is having on our discourse. <laughs> All I can say is that it's this way better than ridiculous. Comments on the internet. <laughs> That's right. We need to we need to start talking about post office boxes again. Rain it in. <laughs> Speaking of post office boxes, talking about post office boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, I, I got yeah my fam my my house received my house and the house across the street, which is my in laws' house. We received our our free uh, COVID tests in the mail. Ooh, I wonder if mine are here. That is exciting. You know what? We should create a redirect uh, at gangstergrass.com to the order form for that so that we can just be like, go to gangstergrass.com slash test and you too can order your U.S. government funded K better late than never COVID tests. (laughs) Yeah. I wish it were as easy to get the masks, but instead you're supposed to go into an actual drugstore to pick up your N95s. But do go get your N95s and Wait, wear the them to the Wait, the government send those too? Well, they're not sending them out. They're 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 providing them free via like Walgreens and CVS and all those folks. No, no I'll I'll just let other people go get theirs. I have we have quite the supply. <laughs> We're preppers at this house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I remember I, I I started keeping a supply of N95 masks in my house back during the anthrax attacks because I worked at the post. And if you're going to, you know, if you're going to work in a newsroom during a time when people are mailing anthrax to reporters, uh, N95 yeah, is the way to go. I feel you on that. I feel you yeah. on that. Yep. I dig that. Yep. Crazy. That seems perfectly reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Well, plus we got the little kid size in 95s for the kid. No. That's so They're cute. They're lowercase N95. <laughs> Little N95. <laughs> That's good. I didn't know that they had those. I really Yes, they I do. Cuz the the big the regular size ones do not give you a good seal on a little face. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so get your masks on and come on out to the show and you can get tickets. Just go to gangstergrass.com slash tour. That'll take you right to our events page. But there's also a decent chance, you know, if we're coming to your town, that probably whatever town it's in or whatever state it's in, you just go to gangstergrass.com slash that thing and you will get a link to the show. So for our friends out in St. Louis, gangstergrass.com slash STL. For our friends in maryland coming out to frederick this week that's gangstergrass.com slash md then we're going to be in richmond chester virginia that's gangstergrass.com slash i think it's chester actually because we got a couple of virginia shows so we didn't want to make it va and yeah. uh and then south orange gangstergrass.com slash nj joyzy <laughs> I wonder if we can roll that interview from today from uh, 
from from the News 12 New Jersey. That was great. That was that was a really, really nice piece of reporting on Gangster Grass. Really appreciated that they did that. Yeah, big shout out to John Bathke. That was a that was a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. And the, you know, you appreciate the enthusiasm they get. So it's like it's so interesting that as long as Gangster Grass has been doing this, it's still blowing minds. It blows my every time somebody's like, hey, that's a thing? Oh my goodness, this is the thing I've always wanted in my life, and I didn't realize it was there. I had no idea. I didn't know that I had this appetite until until I saw the food. <laughs> yeah, my thing is is always cool at seeing how just how um, how amped people are at these morning shows. Mm-hmm. They're just always so full of energy. <laughs> I mean, as the only morning person in my house, <laughs> it's appreciated. I, I yeah. have never watched wanna, the morning news, but we yeah. in... We want to talk about something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wrench is going to sample all of this, by the way. I'm going to mute, I'm gonna mute and queue it's, it up. It's all getting sampled. That's going to be on the next mixtape. Yeah. yeah. We want to talk we about... We want to talk we, about something. We, we want to talk about... We, we, we want to talk about... Actually, send me that. I want to do some scratching. Right? Heck yeah. It's coming. It's going to be a thing. Speaking of the next mixtape, yo, you know what I was listening to today? What? That I think we should probably try and do? What's that? What? Exhibit C. That's on the list. Is it on the list? Yeah, it's on the list. Like, that piano, like, if Dan can get that on the banjo, and with that that, that hype violin in the back, yo. You just say... If Dan can get it on the banjo. <laughs> of course, Dan. Yep. Dan played pie on the banjo. Yep. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yep. Can you up the conceited face, maybe? Do it. <laughs> Do it. All right. Do you want to put on this uh, uh, Gangster Grass on the News? Heck yeah. Let's so this is courtesy them. of News 12 New Jersey. So making good on the name TV. we are watching <laughs> TV. It's really interesting. I have never seen this. An unusual musical mashup. A group that blends bluegrass people and hip hop. Yes, it's coming here to New Jersey. <laughs> and it is a mashup. News 12 New Jersey's John Backey tells us the concert by Gangster Grass yes. marks a special <laughs> moment for the theater where they are performing. This may seem like an unlikely combination, bluegrass and hip hop, but not for the group Gangster Grass. They were both born in very in very similar situations with you know similar people, you know, folks that didn't have a whole lot. Our son is an MC out of Philadelphia, one of the diverse voices giving Gangster Grass its unique sound. But just to be what we get to be, you know, that's that's a really powerful thing. Describe that, be what we get to be. We would go play shows and we would see the people that just naturally come and hear us. And it's been a really powerful experience to bring people together in the audience. It's been a really meaningful thing for us as different people. Banjo artist Dan Whitener lives in Matawan. The group released its latest album, No Time for Enemies, in 2020. But due to the pandemic, it only now is beginning to tour on the album, a tour that will bring Gangster Grass to the South Orange Performing Arts Center on February 5th, the first full capacity main stage performance here since the pandemic. Renovations are being completed at the nonprofit after severe flooding from Hurricane Ida further delayed its full return to operations by an additional five months. Now, the music of Gangster Grass will welcome back its audience. John Bathke, News 12, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I hadn't realized that they had been slammed by uh, by Ida like that. So this is this is um, you know our first show that we played last year uh, in Virginia was was also the first show 
of uh, of I think a new venue. At that was it a totally new venue or they had just revamped it? What did they it do? It was it was very no, it was new, new right before the pandemic, and then they right. like basically had to instantly shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, there was that the Levitt Pavilion. That's yeah. right. Love the Levitt Yo. shows. Yeah, Yo, awesome. homegirl's energy was. Yeah. Yeah, we Ball. should we should invite her to the uh, show. Shark. Yeah, oh, she definitely. definitely needs to be there. <laughs> you know what? I was, here's the thing that I, that I've found. Uh, throughout doing this for the last 10 years that really that really sort of sets what we're doing apart and how you really get how much people really know about hip hop and how much they don't because when they're really not into it you hear the both words very separately it's <laughs> hip hop <laughs> You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's it's too it, and you know if you've been yeah, under, the way you know, she you, said it the way she said it I could tell that she has a Kango somewhere yeah yeah some but, shell but to the, Adidas but the way my man said it it was like if it's if you're a hip hop cat it's a two syllable word if you're not it's two words mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. and and I I I found that like touring and and encountering all these different people that weren't hip hop before they encountered us and recognizing how they are saying hip hop <laughs> as opposed to just hip hop you know what i mean it's it's Don't say it it, like that it makes me uncomfortable it <laughs> fascinates the hell out of me dude. Don't do that Don't do that <laughs> then they get exposed to gangster grass and they they start saying it different right and maybe they can stop saying gangster grass too yeah. Yeah, maybe. I doubt it though. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> so what uh speaking of gangster grass, what items uh that we can put our name on are things that you would be interested in getting? Like uh, you know, Dan was talking about like hair products the other day and um, so, uh, I think hand skin sanitizer. Products, I'm, I'm skin products. Skin I'm like products, lotions, hand sanitizer. Body butters. We got hair. We got skin. <laughs> we we are not going to sell those things. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, you never know. No, we know. Yo, you know what? We know. Let me, let me ask a question real quick. I'm going to look into it with a friend of mine that makes body butters and see if she can come up with a new one. Yeah, I'm trying to get Doctor Stiffy to come back because uh, we're still I'm still working on the last little jar of. Uh, Me too, man. Of you the, know, I um, just uh, I just got some soap in the mail, actually. From, where do you think? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Uh, yeah, we need some more of that body butter. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important though. Just just so you know, where we would not put the gangster grass or the gangster grass name on anything that was not all natural a lot of products are are you know marketed as all natural and you actually look at the ingredients and you go uh no but we're talking about shea butter we're talking about cocoa butter we're talking about my personal favorite red raspberry seed oil we're talking about essential oils that are named and specific not yeah, man. not we're various some parabens, we're gonna get some bha <laughs> some pha we're gonna get some phthalates right exactly we're gonna just love put to teflon say. right so, in so, there was a sodium laurel sulfate right sodium laurel sulfate sodium laureth yeah, sulfate yeah, all yeah, of the, the sodium yeah, sulfate sodium lorax sulfate <laughs> put in there it's got to be good it's yo y'all think i'm y'all think i'm joking i just sent a message to uh my dear friend, uh, singer, songwriter, producer, Alexa Gold, um, who makes this amazing body butter that I had, this mm-hmm. tropical John. Nice. And I was like, yo, you think you can make a gangster grass, John? I just sent it a message. So Nice. Nice. Yo. Yeah. Y'all think I'm joking. Cause her joints are the truth. I don't. Her joints are the truth. And we can call it gangster grass el- elbow grease. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Because that's the first place I'm hitting. Don't worry, sleeves. See, look at this. This is all Dr. Stiffy, right? You see there? Yeah, no yeah. ash. Yo, y'all think it's... You see these elbows? Y'all think, y'all think I'm lying. Because I just ordered some of her stuff. The one that I usually use, the tropical one. I trust her her, her ability with, you know, creating fresh scents and whatnot. Yeah. Watch. Watch. Y'all think I'm joking. I want something great for you. I could really go for some, like, a honeysuckle <laughs> one or something like that. <laughs> 
Yo, creep, yo, creep, sorry, creep, say, creep, wait, creep. it's not the hip hop. <laughs> it's the hip. The, the hippity. To the hop. <laughs> That's what bunnies do. Uh, we should show them some of these uh, fresh uh, tour posters. Yes, please. Got going on, like uh, this one. Yo, this dope. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Terrible. Okay, okay. No, so got, we are joking. I got a better one that we we improved on that. So um, we're talking something more like this. Ready for a hot tour poster? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love G- Gansagrass. That was the best. <laughs> got to be careful with that one because that one I think would actually go over fairly well. Yeah. <laughs> Some demographics. Yep. Yes. So, in case you couldn't tell, we're coming to Louisville. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> you might not have been able to tell. We're coming to Louisville. <laughs> Headliners Music Hall. That is February 25th. That's the day after Knoxville, uh, which is February 24th. The Bijou Theater. We've got some, got some uh, good tour posters being bopped around out there. If you see one, share it. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to yeah. come on out. Got I am curious mauve in the chat, representing yeah. Jersey. Tell all your yes. friends about the Sopac show. Jersey represent mauve. Where are you? Where are you at? Where are you at in Jersey? Shout it out. You can just say North Jersey or Central Jersey or South Jersey. You don't have to be. Yeah. You don't have to say what exit. But if you do say what exit, I will know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. And we. Uh, uh, and then a there. couple of weeks after that, when we got Philly. Philly. How come? I, I have a I have a question. I have a curiosity. Uh, well, two observations. First of all, we have uh, over five hundred followers. Hey, yep. that's dope. <laughs> yeah. And second, uh, we ha- we have multiple curious uh, usernames <laughs> on, on the Twitch chat. <laughs> and you're curious and about wa- this. I want to know what. Yeah, I want to know what's up with that. Like, do we attract curious people? I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. We're definitely there's a, a lot of people that are like gangster grass. Really, I want to find out. Mm-hmm. We're curious. Yeah, we got the sleuth right here in the group. Oh yeah. word! All right, you're up. Uh, you're up by uh, uh, Clark Westfield, um, which would be a cool name. Clark <laughs> Clark separate Westerfeld. Town. Clark Westerfeld was a name two, in the two Americans. Two separate towns, Clark and and Westfield. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I, I want our son to really like that name. Is that is that a great Clark like Westerfield? comic book name? No, Clark Westfield. Clark Westfield. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like if Clark Kent had amnesia and then woke up in Kansas. And he thought he was Adam West. Yeah. <laughs> and he was in a field. field. <laughs> yeah. In, in the field west of town. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Post office okay. box. Yeah. Post office <laughs> box. Speaking <laughs> of, uh, I, I happened to look briefly at a conversation about the fact that the uh, that DC comics exist in the Marvel universe, which I don't know yes. why is in, so interesting to think about. Yes, they do. I've heard of I've heard of crossovers that work both ways, where there's pieces of media that exist in each other's worlds. So, like, I think I think Boston Legal was involved with something like this, where somebody had a Boston Legal DVD, but then in Boston Legal they also referenced like that show that had the Boston Legal DVD in it. Uh-huh. So yeah. Community did this with, uh, was it Cougars or? Oh, Cougar Town. It was Cougar, Cougar Town? Town, which I have never seen, but that episode of Community made me want to go watch Cougar Town. Wait, yo. Yeah. Let me just tell yeah, you about Abed, Cougar Town. Yeah, Abed's a big fan of Cougar Town. So it's like this. Let me just tell you about Cougar Town. Inhabited by Wildcats. Or... <laughs> nah, so Cougar Town was a, it was a like show the about this of neighborhood, King. about this neighborhood in a cul de sac, and like there were two. One uh, one lady was divorced, and her husband lived on a boat. They shared custody of their teenage son. There was a married couple, and there was another John that was there. I think it wound up being like four or five people. Um, it was actually pretty funny. But from that came the idea for the greatest TV show that will never happen. Uh, it's a show called Quarterback Town. <laughs> what? And, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, me and my squad came up with this, right? When I was All working right. at, the, at the comic store I was working at. Right. Um, the idea was, you have, a, again, a cul-de-sac neighborhood. Uh-huh. 
and all of the houses are owned by teams that have won Super Bowls, okay. right? And the quarterbacks live there. Okay. So, like – the Patriots house is there and you know, Tom Brady's life is perfect and it's whatever. And everything is really good except for his tires keep deflating. No, every day, no, every day, <laughs> every day, Eli Manning comes out of the giant's house and ruins his day every single day. <laughs> um, the is chained to the rock. There's a, wait, there's a, there's a Steelers house. And Terry Bradshaw is just outside running his mouth all the time. <laughs> you might need to stop right now and get an animator. And Roethlisberger <laughs> is just doing shifty stuff in the, in the out of the out of the, out the, in and out the back door. Um, what else? He's the quagmire on? of the of the neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. There's a uh, there's a Forty ers house, and uh, Steve Young is just always happy about getting over the hump of something that Joe Montana has done a bunch of times. Um, Tampa Bay has a house there, and now Brady has keys to that house, and he just walks in there whenever he wants to. <laughs> um, and now th- we came up with this years ago. So before the before 2017, the 2017 2018 season, there was no Eagles house there. So the Eagles and every team that had been to a Super Bowl but never won one that had never been to that had never won a Super Bowl, they had houses in another neighborhood. <laughs> so like at the Eagles house. Uh, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, and Donovan McNabb were always just trying to see who was the fastest at everything. Um, so now, but now there's the Eagles' house, and Nick Foles is over there just being nice to everybody because that's what he does. The last, but the rest the of those guys part, still live in that other neighborhood. They still live in the other Yeah, they all still live in the other neighborhood. They, still, they show up every now and again, and they're still trying to be faster than everybody else, but then they got to roll because they're black. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I wasn't going to say it. But here's the best part. Somewhere on the other other side of town is the Bills house. <laughs> and every day Jim Kelly has to just get out of bed. Because the Bills lost four Super Bowls in a row, you see. Yeah. I see. And so every day he's just miserable. Can um That's can, the idea for quarterback town. It would be brilliant. Can there be can there be like a high rise downtown? Where the the evil uh, like the supervillain Dan Snyder is up there stroking his cat, you know. Wait first, wait, 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 wait. Copyright Randall Green. Oh yeah, <laughs> first, oh, yeah, yeah. Put that. Down. Copyright. Wait, not just me, not just me. Shout out to RJ yeah. and Chris Buke. Those are my guys. When I when I when I oh. put this money together, Yo, they did it no. with me. You, That's you my guys, people. Uh, Y'all got to put together a treatment was, now. I, I thought you were saying this was actually something that was discussed on Cougar Town, the show. Nah. <laughs> no, this is this is something that I that I that me okay. and my boys came up with. So can we oh. do that? Can we, it, rather than just creating the show, can we instead find a show that's in production and get the characters to talk about it, <laughs> thus making it canon in the show and increasing the odds of it being made in the real world? I or would love that. Even better, increasing. We can the pitch odds this it, to Adult Swim, <laughs> or or increasing the odds of it being made with it, the show within a show, so that they watch little snippets of Quarterback Town within. I'm telling uh, you, man. Yeah, Adult Swim. Yo, we yeah. was bagging up about this thing for hours because it was ridiculous. Man. Really thought it through. You threw yeah, me oh, yeah, we went... a gauntlet though when you said greatest show never made because I got something for you. Ooh, what you got? What you got? And this actually, there was a pilot made. It was for a show called Heat, Vision, and Jack. I'm just bringing up the Wikipedia to read you. What's now? Heat, Vision, and Jack is a 1999 American comedy science fiction television pilot created and written by Rob Schraub and Don Harmon, directed by Ben Stiller and starring Jack Black, Owen Wilson, and Ron Silver. And Did you say Don Harmon? Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. Oh, I thought, no. yeah, it was like any relation. <laughs> or, or a oh, pseudonym works, that he was in. Ron Silver. <laughs> the plot. The pilot opens with Ben Stiller talking about the canceled Ben Stiller show, the Emmy Award he won for the show, and sarcastically criticizing George Lucas for having not won an Emmy. And then after a short sting, Heat Vision then opens with a title sequence explaining how Jack gained his new powers and how Heat Vision came into existence. The characters are Jack Black as Jack Austin, a former astronaut. He was exposed to inappropriate levels of solar energy, giving him super intelligence. He appears to lose this intelligence at night, requiring only Earth normal levels of daylight to reactivate it. His catchphrases are, I know everything, and knowledge is power for real. 
and Owen Wilson as Heat Vision, a talking motorcycle that was created when Jack's unemployed roommate Doug was shot by an experimental ray gun, causing him to merge with his motorcycle. <laughs> he's capable of speech and can fight by ramming into opponents. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and he is unable to use doorknobs and is unable to write himself if pushed over. And Ron Silver as himself, the main villain. He works for NASA and will stop at nothing to capture or kill Jack Austin. So, you know the great thing about uh, Jack Black being an astronaut? Oh, yeah. His mom worked for NASA. Right. Yeah. Like, the story of, of him being born is the, like, is the most made-up sounding, actually true story where she, like, wrote the guidance program for, I think, the Apollo mission went into labor, was working on the program while she was in labor, finished it, and gave birth to Jack Black. Like, that's the end of the story. <laughs> the true story. Yeah. She's like, this is my retirement plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this space you will be a movie okay. star. <laughs> it's wild, though. Like, you look at an old picture of her, you definitely see it. <laughs> Wait, she looks like Jack Black? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can picture him. He's like kind of roundish. Is that right? He is kind of roundish. It is not necessary for you to picture any further detail. Cool. <laughs> it's very kinetic, though. Very kinetic. Like, possibly most kinetic man up there with Jackie Chan. I, I really like that. I would watch... <laughs> I would Jack watch it, Jackie. And Jackie Chan, you know, in a movie together. Right. It's got to be called Jack and Jackie. <laughs> yeah. Now Jack Black is the um, is uh in the Black Keys, right? Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, him and Jack White is the uh, is the White Keys. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just call it the Keys. Right. All the they, keys. they get that Ebony and Ivory song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, sir, that was Stevie Wonder and Frank Sinatra. Oh, man, I'm going to start our own misinformation campaign. Yeah. No, he's in a band <laughs> called uh, Tenacious D. I mean, I know that. <laughs> there, there's that little, uh, there's the, there's the callback to Conceited. There we go. Right. You never know when you're being earnest. Sleeves just thought I would drop that true you know it's it's like we were talking about misinformation earlier you know we're getting that out there you know we're repeating things that are that are lies and i just don't want people to think that uh jack black and jack white uh did wait did they actually collaborate on something i feel like they did at some point they did show up just yeah, it was, a, it was like, a mixtape they did why would you not Six mafia um come on man <laughs> i i will say that uh, no, I no, I did not intentionally get that wrong. I believe that it, I believe you that it's wrong, but I did not intentionally get that wrong. As far as I can picture the Black Keys, the guy in the Black Keys is definitely rounded Jack Black. Okay. Oh, they. Let's just go with they, that. They, 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 <laughs> no, I'm gonna let me stop. Yeah. I was gonna say something <laughs> dumb. <laughs> I was gonna say something Black stupid. Keys. Well, they're either sharper or flatter. Um, <laughs> Oh, that was good. No, that was good. It's a it's a duo of uh, Jack Black and Alicia Keys. Yeah, that 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 feels more right to me than anything else that we've described so far. Actually, I think that's. And remember, correct. kids, if it feels right, yes, go with it. <laughs> that's right. And now I'm committed to it. So yeah, my my grandfather will not change my mind just so that you could go check your facts. <laughs> Very truthy. So, yeah, there's a bunch of truthiness to it. Got a lot of truthiness. <laughs> oh, Betty Lynn almost slept through the whole stream. Oh, oh you've oh. missed some uh, uh, quality television. I'm not sure what you missed. It's okay. You can you watch missed, it. You uh, missed some, some, some discussions about personal hygiene. That's right. No, I think we better get some right, all the special usual. guests booked. <laughs> By the way. Well, the next, the way, the next team yeah. stream is going to be from the Chester show. Hey! Just so yes. you know, Alexa is down. Cool. Okay. That was easy. Did you tell her about the honeysuckle? And grapefruit. I'll do that right now. 
Okay, how do you say? Grapefruit? But we we have to see the ingredient list before she goes to the trouble right. of actually creating it. I mean, but you, you, you got to do the coconut list. mango one for, for we're, we're very trusting awesome. people. We just put all kinds of crap on our bodies. I I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like something yep. in here smells like smoked paprika. We've <laughs> gone to uh, New Jersey rest stops, so hell yes, we have. We're not concerned about what's in it. Pork roll. I mean, <laughs> I, I have a I have a poster of all the New Jersey rest areas in my bathroom. That doesn't mean that I, you know, I, I've gotten like the an walls egg and anymore. cheese. I've gotten an egg and cheese on a roll from a bodega with, with a bodega cat sitting on the grill. So <laughs> I'm not going to be too concerned about what's. God what's no. No, that's not. The logic is flawed. That's Did not a like good that? reason. No, that's solid. That's solid. <laughs> God, that's terrible. That's, I'm sort of amazed, given how likely it is that you have toxoplasmosis, that you don't actually have a cat, Wrench. Wait, you have toxoplasmosis? I mean, if he got a bodega sandwich from a, from a bodega <laughs> cat, probably... <laughs> That's how you get it. Once again, <laughs> just it. go with whatever feels right. Don't Gosh. Google it. That's Don't I really check hope facts. That's fireworks. I'm actually getting a cat, by the way. Bodega cat sandwich is how you. Okay. Don't. That's right. Or from the cat, litter boxes in the in the gender neutral restrooms. That's. Just, uh, getting a cat uh, in a couple of weeks. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you bring the lint brush before. before Her name's before Athena. And nice. she yeah, looked pretty awesome. I, I just want to. I just want her because there. Uh, there is a. I had a mouse problem for a minute, and I was like, you know what? We ain't doing this no more. Yeah. So if we got this, I got these um, electric mouse trap, and it took care of it real quick. Cats? You had electric mice? <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I fly Yo. away into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I had a K. Dick book. Do electric mice dream of electric... My mouse drop. Cats. <laughs> cats. Here, right. sleeves. That thing I just did. That like that's some that's some like Jack Black shit right there. That's what he would do. He would. And I'm like. Uh, oh. so you probably never saw School of Rock. Okay. Ah. Uh, Correct. Your loss. Your loss. If you haven't seen School. Yeah, of it's Rock. cool movie. Not only that. I uh, give School of Rock the number two, uh, commentary track of all time. Ooh. Of movies because they had a commentary track that was the kids. Yes. And yes. It consisted mostly. Of the kids shouting over each other, oh, that's that. This is the line where I say, and then saying their lines along with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have so many questions now. One is, what is the number one? Uh, uh, no, uh, number one I'm commentary track. Yeah, what is the number one commentary track? For Dude, where's my car? Uh, Ashton Kutcher and Sean, what the, whatever his name is, William Scott. Yes, yeah, Sean William Scott. They were they had to come in and do the commentary track and somebody basically just like sat them down at a table next to what I only imagine is like coolers and shelves full of alcohol. And as the commentary <laughs> track goes on, they get drunker and drunker. Um, at some point, the table breaks. There's like complete chaos by the end of it. They're just totally shit faced and it just gets really weird. OK. All right. That's one question. The next question is. Um, Arsen, are you are you rescuing Athena, the rescue cat? Uh, well, a friend of mine had rescued her, but she already has two other cats, so she was like, "All right, you want this cat?" I'm like, eh, "Sure, why not?" Yay! No. <laughs> Did she phrase it that way? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, Amy and Aaron's mom asked her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was like, eh, "Maybe I should get a cat," and she knew somebody that was like, "Hey, I that had an extra cat." And it was like, because her husband, they already had two, and her husband was like, no, we're not. I got some extra cats no, later. I don't need an extra cat. Now, supposedly, she was an outdoor cat, and they, they rescued her or whatever. Okay. But they, now, what they're saying was that she was a feral, and I'm like, all right, hold on. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to, you know, wake up one night to see her just hunched over me about to jump on my face. I don't need that. That's a bit much. Like, you can save that for the mice. Have a good time. Whatever. I'm going to say, though, like, you want her to take care of the mice or not. Yo. Because if you want her to take the mice, chase the mice, catch the mice, pick the mice up, put the mice in her mouth, and then let them go, then you get a nice tame cat yeah. <laughs> like the one that we have. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I had a cat. My my cat, uh, 
my ex-wife had a cat named Cosmo. Cosmo was a G. This dude could catch anything. He brought a he caught a, a a chipmunk and brought it in the house and was like, "Hey, look what I found!" And then he dropped him, and then he was running around in, in the kitchen and <laughs> no, he was in the closet and was chilling in, in in her shoe. And Cosmo went in there and tracked her down and whooped this yo. He whooped this mouse ass. I sat there and watched it just like pat 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 pat, just threw hands on him and it just gripped him up in his mouth and like Argh. I was like. Oh, damn, did I just see a whole ass nature special right here in my living room? Like, cuz. Yeah, Cabo was a G. Yeah, he was an absolute G. I want something like that. Uh, I had a, like- a, we had a, when I first moved to Philly, I had to, we had, I rescued this cat uh, from um from a shelter named Carlito. Well, that was the name we gave him because he was a gangster. <laughs> um he, like I got him because like when I first, when I walked in to look at the cats or whatever, he was the first one to, like, stick his paw out of the cage, like, yo, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. me, over here. Yeah, yeah. And he, like, he fist bumped me right quick, and he had, like, <laughs> one ear that was, like, he had, one ear was shorter than the other one, like, it had been cut or something like that, but this cat was so gangster. He used to break out of the house every day when <laughs> I went to work, come back, and be waiting for me on the front step. Right? It was a second floor apartment. <laughs> <laughs> he would break, <laughs> he'd, he'd break out through the window, <laughs> and then just be waiting for me on the front. And like, what the, what the, check? like, why are you here? What? <laughs> he'd, he'd be sitting on the front stoop, smoking a Newport. I was like, just chilling. <laughs> Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> like, you good? What'd you, what'd you order some wings? I'm like. <laughs> so Excuse awesome. me? Yo, what up, Ock? Excuse me? Excuse me? Um, hold on. Did you call me. All right. Sounds like Dan's cat. Uh, maybe he could just uh, film it for some uh, Tom and Jerry uh, footage. Yeah, right. Yeah, that that would have done it. And I'll include like my own legs from the knee down. Yeah. Only we get Tracy be, like, Morgan to do the voices. It'd all be banjo music. Mm-hmm. Um, that would actually be that's what Tom and Jerry needs banjo music. Yes. Fun fun fact though, uh, a friend of mine is a writer for Smithsonian Magazine, and uh, he used the term "murder beast" in an article about cats. Yeah. There's also an article about songbirds. Yeah, they are. So, they yeah. they yeah, they murder most songbirds. Yep. Speaking of Tom and Jerry, did anyone kill enough brain cells watching that movie? I watched a I few minutes of that. Yet. It's a movie? Oh, no, no, no. I saw the first movie back in uh, ye olden 90s. Y'all nah, man. The, the one that just came out with uh, Colin Chloe. Che is in it. And what's the girl's name from Hit, uh, from Kick Ass? Colin, Colin Che. Are you, are, you, are you hybridizing the two Saturday Night uh, Live uh, weekend uh, update? Colin Jost. Yeah, okay. Colin Jost. Oh, they okay. are I do that all the time. <laughs> They're actually one person. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chloe, what's the girl's Chloe name Grace from, uh, from, right? from Kick Ass? Chloe Grace Moritz? Yeah. Yeah, she was in it, and uh, yeah, Hit Girl was in it. Yo, I, yo, I was watching that movie. I was like, I could hear the brain cells leaving. They were like, all right, yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, if this is what you're gonna do with us, yeah, right. We we are not putting up with this. <laughs> you do not deserve us. I say good day, sir. I'm just walking out my ear. <laughs> Go back saying, and watch. If you. they're not, if. <laughs> I'm saying it's hard. I I can't imagine you seeing I, being a real Tom and Jerry movie if it wasn't like all shot at like knee level. Yeah, mm. first of all, not though. I mean, you gotta you gotta go back and watch some real like you know high quality like the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Like that stuff is really very intellectual when you when you sit down and you know and uh, and uh, truth though. No, nah, I lost yo, the train of thought there. I had some good ass times watching Tom and Jerry. I'm not even gonna lie. Sure, sure. Not even but gonna but lie. like, how how the in the classic brain cells? jazz music and because uh, the soundtrack, the, music, the Tom the music, and Jerry the soundtrack, soundtrack the sound was pretty. butter, cause it was great. They had it some was great. dope stuff on there. You know what I mean? And it was a little bit on the racist side, but I mean, when I was most of the cartoons was back then was was mad racist. Yeah. I mean, you know, O U W T. That's how she spelled out. I was like, "What? <laughs> Hold on, I know that's not a, how you spell that word." Does she have a name? The the female character. Yes, no. oh, Mammy. 
Mammy. That she was her name. Just, it just was. Yep. Yeah. Because okay. Tom and Jerry. Because, no. yeah. Let's let's not pretend here, folks. <laughs> but she did always call him Thomas. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> no, really no, did. no. She also called him Jasper. Remember this? Yes. I do remember this? that. Way yes. back. Way yes. back. You did call him Jasper a couple times. And I was confused by that. Like, wait. <laughs> this is not. Who? Who is that? Now, that might have just been like a term, you know, not necessarily his name. But, oh. Yeah. It could also be just one of those, like, early version things, like, uh, like uh, what is it, Bosco, you know? Early Mickey. Or it could yes. be, like, yes. Tom is his name among the animals, right? Like, the humans named him Jasper. So <laughs> I don't really know his real name. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's deep, guys. Right, and actually, the Rum Tum Tugger or whatever. <laughs> Nonsense. I want to see, see Tom and Jerry in cat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. You know, yo, that would be so. Because I think even Tom and Jerry would be confused. Like, what, what's happening here? Hey, Heathcliff and the, the junkyard cats. They would just be whooping their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Heathcliff would just be throwing hands. Like, if y'all don't get out of here. No, Billy Cat shows, shows up. Everybody's just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Felix shows up, like, "What's happening here, uh, dog?" Uh, Fritz the cat shows up. Yeah, Birdie, crazy cat, <laughs> crazy cat. Crazy Listen, we, cat. Yeah, we did a thing. Oh, like, yeah. We did a thing That's on Black great. Triples a couple years back. Uh, every March, we would do like a a countdown, like a a, a a March Madness. The whole month would be like top 64 or whatever. And we did uh, cartoon cats. Mm-hmm. And I think... Oh, Was it like popularity or like who would win in a fight? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. Um like Laser cats. SWAT cats were on there. Oh, yeah, the SWAT cats. And cats. Battle Cat was on it. Yo, it was crazy, man. It was do you, crazy. Do you, count, do you count Eugene the Jeep? No. Eugene was a Jeep. <laughs> it's in the name. It's right there. He was an actual Jeep. Like, he came from a race of Jeeps. That's what they was. How fast did they race? Nah! <laughs> See what you did there. They were racing. <laughs> yep. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Wait, who won the who won the battle of the oh, cats? Oh, you know what? I do not remember. Hold on, let me let me let me double check. I feel like other. I feel like you and I have talked about this before, and it was some girl cat. I think it was a girl cat. I gotta I gotta reach out to Chitara. Hold on, maybe. I'm going with Chitara. Yeah. Uh, what's her? I name think she was her? in it. I think Chitara was in it. She might have won. What's her name with the uh, with the with the gap teeth from uh, Garfield? What's her name? What is her name? It's not Liz. I, I genuinely not, don't know. I, I definitely know Nermal. Cat. Yeah, right. I know Nermal. Arlene. The, Arlene sound. Wait. Oh, Arlene. Is no, Arlene, Arlene a cat was or the, was Arlene John's was, friend? No, Arlene was, the, no, was no, John's, Liz, John's girlfriend. No, no, no. That's Liz. Liz is John's girlfriend. <laughs> oh, wait. So, was, so Arlene's was the cat? Arlene? It might Arlene be. There's definitely an Arlene. Right. Arlene sounds right. <laughs> Weird that it's all the same vowel sounds as Garfield. Arlene. <laughs> Garfield. Huh. It's weird, right? Isn't that weird? Huh. So weird. It's so very strange. It is. I wonder if Garfield would take part in this all cartoon cats remake of cats. Mm-hmm. I feel like Garfield would just be like, I'm not having any part of this. Right. Yeah, definitely it'd, be, not. it'd be a cameo where the spotlight just goes over to Garfield and he's just sitting there and then yes. and then the next scene happens. Yeah, it's just him at the vet. <laughs> it's like, look, John, you gotta stop feeding him. <laughs> lasagna <laughs> but he likes it i don't care stop still one of my, one of my he can't favorite. walk under his own strength one, one, one of my right. favorite cartoons is still uh garfield without garfield mm-hmm. yeah it's just like classic strips of garfield where all of garfield's image and and text has been removed and so it's mostly just john talking to himself at home <laughs> like, just losing his mind and being really depressed yeah. it's really horrible yeah but i don't know it had a little more grit that way you get a deeper <laughs> emotional storyline that way yeah well and because when you realize like he is just talking to himself and his cat is not talking to him audibly 
mm. then like you get a sense of yeah what's what his life is really like oh oh yeah i don't i mean maybe the cat is tight i'm not gonna I'm not gonna dismiss the possibility that that they're having a real conversation i mean you know we've all we've all had pets who you know we say something and the pet will be like <laughs> no no <laughs> You ever have an English teacher that told you that you interpreted it wrong? <laughs> interpreted what your cat told you wrong? No, I'm saying like whatever the you know like if you read uh, I don't know you know Slaughterhouse Five or like uh, Life of Pi or something, and you were like, yeah, that metaphor, no, the thing is real, like the animal is real or the aliens are real or whatever, and then they were like, no, you can't choose to read it that way. That's just wrong. <laughs> I definitely, I've definitely had a French teacher who told me I interpreted things wrong, but that was, well, a that was accurate. Language class. It's a little that was different. Accurate. It I was mean, legitimately I guess English wrong. is a language. <laughs> I was only taking French because I thought it would be as awesome and <clears throat> easy as Spanish. And it turns out that's not the case. They have all kinds of extra letters that don't need to be there. And it's just ridiculous. <laughs> don't need to be there. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to agree with They're that. They're there for a reason. <laughs> They're oh. there for a, a reason. It's just not necessarily a, a good reason. <laughs> they're um, they're basically oh, sex oh, sounds. Oh. They're sex sounds that didn't find a word to attach to, so they ended up at the end of French words. <laughs> I you gotta remember that. Though. Uh, yeah, you gotta I remember, gotta though, remember that, that. Every every language that <laughs> is spoken by humans is used in sex. Right, so I'm just saying okay. there's some other sounds that happen in there, <laughs> and they do they did the the letters of those sounds just go over to the end of French words. Yeah, yeah, That's E A U X definitely. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I feel like we've covered a lot of territory here tonight. I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's a, that's a good place. Yeah. Good place to stop. We have a lot yeah. of shows coming up, and if you oh. think the live stream banter is something, check out the on stage banter. It's Man. way better because we rehearse it and we have less time. And nope, if they don't rehearse yeah. that. No, <laughs> no, no. We, mu we might though. We might, in advance of certain special, super special <laughs> recorded for television show. I'll be curious to see how that goes. No. Nah, bro. No, no. Lise was just saying that sometimes people can talk to their pets. Their pets will make sounds back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sample okay. that. Sample yeah. that. Oh, and speaking of animals, uh, our son... Yo. Uh, right under the buzzer, last question from the YouTube chat. What type of kitty are you getting? I don't know, some random ass cat. All uh, right. <laughs> rescue Thanks, rescue, rescue cat. It's a mutt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> rescue cats don't have types. Do you, do you call it a mutt if it's a cat or do you call it a mat? <laughs> what? I win. I win. <laughs> Thank you. The winner is me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> dads. Champion. Right. Champion. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful hanging out with all of you folks. We Champion. will see you Thursday, Frederick, Maryland. Friday, Chester, Virginia. Saturday, South Orange, New Jersey. Up near Danjo's house. Come on out. Going to be bringing back, as you saw earlier, uh, the South Orange Performing Arts Center post flood with all the renovations and the great ventilation. And then. Then, 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 little little tiny hiatus, wrench turns upside down, and we end up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania yeah. on February 17th with Reef the Lost Reef. Cause opening. That is going to be... And listen. Oh. That's going to be bananas. We got the ventilation. <laughs> We're going to Penn Station. It'll be a celebration. Be a sensation. <laughs> and then Washington, D.C., and North Carolina, of the nation. Virginia, and Tennessee, and Kentucky, Wisconsin, now. and Missouri. <laughs> we are coming to you. Wrench is going to actually do the whole set upside down. So look just for that. Ahead. I'm just ahead. 
The entire <laughs> Seattle show will be done in fake British accents, as promised previously on this Why stream. Why did I do that? Uh, that was your idea, wasn't it? That's right. It's too idea late now. Idea is a strong word too late for the thing I did randomly. So everyone's going to have to practice their accents. <laughs> no, I think unpracticed is going to be the best way. <laughs> My gosh. And it, for some reason, when, when an unpracticed British accent always turns into Australian. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, or then, just a bad short cotton. step to New Zealand. Or a seriously hey, bad Cockney, yeah. Seriously yeah. bad quick, Cockney, that's it. Real, real quick though, just a little, little shout out to the Barnstormers here. I, uh, I really enjoyed making this guitar, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep it. But I enjoyed making it so much that I might, I might keep going on this, and I might like make a few more. I know Dolio has talked about uh, making some, some bodies over there, and I'm just, I'm starting to think like, maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe some Barnstormers might. Um, might have an interest in uh, like a like a special gangster grass guitar. Hey. The funny thing about this, right, is that the body is actually reclaimed uh, cedar in this case. But basically, anytime you make a Telecaster out of like reclaimed pine or cedar or whatever, like from a barn, you can call it a barn caster. This is a real thing. So yeah, I'm thinking. Hmm. I don't know how we're going to do this. Some barn stormers for some barn casters for barn stormers, or maybe like a maybe like a guitar tier where you back us for like. You know, a thousand dollars a month or whatever. Um, just throwing ideas out there. If you want to back us for a thousand dollars a month, I will marry you. Um, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> That's right. We have five backers. Thanks to Grass. Grass. Marry so all of you. A person. All right. <laughs> Not legal. And three, three of us are actually qualified to do that. <laughs> That's true. That's right. That's right. Um, uh, Mary, you too. I have been I've been doing some, a lot of work with I've been doing a lot of work with um, some some really cool finishes on woods mm -hmm. this week, and and you guys have seen it. I can't show the the crowd yet, but you all have seen it. Yeah. And I'm sure lots of us would like to to see some behind the scenes video on that and of Dan making guitars and talking about we like so so uh, throw some of that down on video and we'll share it with some barnstormers. Yep. Yeah. Heck yeah. Gangstergrass.com slash barnstormers if you're not already a barnstormer. And go to gangstergrass.com just in general and sign up for our email list so you, that you don't have to spend so much time on social media. Uh, but if you do like to spend time on social media, we are at Gangstergrass on all of the social channels. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, please like and Gotta subscribe. Say it. And share. Time. Sharing is great. Like, subscribe, and share. And follow come, yeah, follow, follow, right, follow creepily. Uh, come on out to all of the shows, as many as you want to come out to. They're all different. They're all fantastic. You're going to hear a lot of new music. You're going to hear your old favorites. And those shows are all listed at gangstergrass.com slash tour. We're still adding shows. So get your tickets now and come on out. And we'll see you on the road this coming week. Yeah. Wait, this week? Yeah. This coming week, uh, the coming up week. Coming week that is about to start. Yes, six so days. Also known as next week, but this Very coming week. Yes. <laughs> you get it. You know what we're talking about, folks. All right. Uh, Betty Lynn. <laughs> we'll see you yeah. soon, Betty Lynn. We'll see you, That's Barnstormers. Right. You'll get your special VIP passes. And we'll see you uh, right here next week. With yeah. some live gangster grass. For sure. All in the same room. Okay, rapper, we'll see you in Winchester. Yeah. <laughs>